Hello everyone, Zach here from the Carnival of Randomness on behalf of our sponsor, Opsitnik and Associates. In these unprecedented times, we reflect on our future, both in the next few weeks and months, but also the upcoming years and decades. And it's time to prepare for that future. Opsitnik and Associates has been contacted by many healthcare workers, as well as old and new clients, to prepare wills, powers of attorney, and advanced directives, also called a living will. All of you need these documents. So don't say you don't have any assets to speak of, no children or other dependents. Regardless of the circumstances now, you will need a will for today and tomorrow. Al Opsitnik feels so strongly about having wills and other needed documents prepared that Opsitnik and Associates can prepare your will, power of attorney, and living will at no charge. You heard that correct. No charge until the end of 2020. No hidden fees or gimmicks. Al feels so strongly about planning for the future at this time that he is willing to assist you with your future. Trust Opsitnik and Associates, attorneys for 42 years, from the Supreme Court to Alaska and everywhere in between. You can find them online, OpsitniksLaw.com, on Facebook, Opsitnik and Associates, or call them toll-free, 1-866-391-3299 to prepare for your future. Hey, here on the Carnival of Randomness, we're, running, we're finishing up summer, and I offered an open invitation to the Black Saints to come out here and expend, explain that video, and they're still lost in the woods. So, we got a quality guest again to end up summer, it's Bauman again! Thank you. And I actually want to talk a little bit about, because I haven't been able to do this all this year, in terms of our history of music clubs. And I was thinking of the bug jar because they're not really open now. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. I was there the first night they opened. I was there. Because it was my friends lived on Priam. Okay. We used to go to Woody's all the time. Yep. So this used to be in Rosie's, which was a different type of bar. Yep. Yep. And we heard there was something weird. We had to go look at this place. So we went down there and my friend, I forgot if they charged the first night because I wasn't going to go in if I had to pay. Uh, no, they did not charge because no. uh, my I went there opening day night whatever on a fluke complete fluke. <laughs> so I was hanging out with Pat Ball. <laughs> yeah, and, who's a, if you don't know, he is a uh, man, the myth, <laughs> <laughs> man, myth. Like, yeah, so I'm hanging out with Pat, and um, we're gonna go out that night, and you know, Woody's was like a big thing to do, and I refused to stand in line for anything yeah. for any bar and then pay a cover wasn't happening and uh we're uh, we'll go to woody's you know so we we park and we walk around the corner and sure enough there's a line and i'm like I'm not doing it and pat's like oh come on, come on. i'm not doing it man <laughs> and i go well, let's go over there looks like they looks like this place just opened up and walked in there was like nobody there um and f- from that moment we were probably there at least once every weekend for probably a good three years. I mean, we were there. And then it got to the point where actually they'd have a line. And we just, we would walk right in because we were like, the, we were like, you know, Norman Cliff from, from Cheers. Oh, yeah. We, we were there all the time. I never remember I was standing in line. I would just go around. I always knew the door guys. I knew yep. Bobby T. And I just, just go, no. <laughs> yeah, we'd, we'd, he'd see us and he'd just wave us and we'd come walking right in. Um, had our little thing at the bar. They knew what we drank. Yeah, it was a great place. It was, uh, you know, a lot of eclectic people with no attitudes. Um, yeah, it was really, really cool. And plus, really, the first really cool thing, place. my fr- my friend, it was Rob de Caesar, you know, it was Mark Rialdi who went to Fisher, but I don't know if you ever met him. And they lived on Priam at the time. So okay. we parked there. And one of our friend, one of the persons went in, and we're outside. He comes up. You got to see this place. Yeah, furniture on the ceiling. Everything was upside and down. And upside down. And I'll yeah. still see people who come in from out of town, and they look up and they can't believe. Yeah, I mean it's cool. I mean, you know, and then like any business, they try to evolve or change. There's not really much you can evolve to change to that place. But then they started doing live shows. Um, I've only seen one live show there. Uh, really, really, really small place. Really, yeah. Small. I can't say the capacity, but I do know like there are people. It's called the AM. It was Jeff Buckley's old band members, and I remember. I think it was going to sell out really quick. They had the pre-sale. Oh, okay. So that was one. But they also used to have Bug Fest, which is at the Highland Bowl, 
And I don't remember that. It didn't last that long. I'd have to get a time frame for you, but I do remember before they were the White Stripes, the White Stripes played there. Huh. And this is always cool. It's always great when you go. I've had, like, my friend Megan saw Nirvana play on Geneseo's campus with under 30 people. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, the closest thing... The closest thing that I would have to, like, Nirvana, 30 people. Well, yeah, your own band, but I think your little crowd was, like, 100,000 or so. (laughs) Um, uh, From the Seattle area, saw Soundgarden at Backstreet's. Um, Backstreet's is huge. It was huge. That was actually a really cool place. I mean, because you had, like, the bar area in one section, and then you go across and through this door thing, and it was, like, I don't know if that place you was, was in, like a mechanic's garage or something. I can picture something. it. You walk in. There's the bar. You go to the right. The stage was there. You go to the left, and there was another section. Maybe. Yeah. If you well, you know, if you walked in, like you've walked in, turn, you're looking right at the bar. You you immediately go to the left, and there was a small stage. I saw the Goo Goo Dolls play up there when they were a punk band. They were phenomenal. We'd we'd go see them in uh, Buffalo at places and and. You know, this haunted have... me a little bit because for the life of me, I really can't remember where Backstreet was. I was thinking Charlotte Street, maybe. I can oh, picture. Man, I, can't I can picture it's, parking. It's, it's off of Sio, I would say it's it's off. It was off Sio, kind of more towards um, like uh, little theater area. Yeah. Um, but when you walked in, if you went to the left, if you walked to your your bar, but you're towards the end of the bar, a left. And there'd be a small stage, but if you kept walking straight, you'd go into this bigger area that had these garage doors that were shut on on the one end, but the other end was a big stage. And they they got some really good. We had there, really. Good I bands. saw Dread Zeppelin, and yep. this is why I remember thinking. And I think you might be right about South because I remember where I parked. It was like a long straightaway, and I'm almost picturing if you go behind a little like that straightaway. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, you anyways, can get, yeah, you you know? can get there from there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're depending on us for accurate information, go yeah. watch a political debate. <laughs> you know I mean? really. But went in, and I remember I learned my lesson about bar food because there was this one guy there. They had pizza. He kept going, pawing it, oh, taking yeah, yeah. bites. So it's yeah. like, I'm not going to have the free food. Yeah. But the thing was for Dred Zeppelin, my roommate in D.C. introduced me to them, the music. Okay. And Dred Zeppelin, for those of you who do not know, it's – Led Zeppelin sung to a reggae beat with the singer called Tort Elvis, who's an Ellis impersonator. Yep. Who yep. supposedly was a mailman in real life, and his shtick was he channeled the ghost of Elvis. But I saw him, and man, he really looked like Elvis. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they had some bizarre bands there. Um, yeah, Dread Zeppelin was one. Uh, but that was that was like a really good place to see. I mean, growing up, depending on the type of music you, you liked or you wanted to see... There were certain places that kind of catered to it. You know, you had Idols. Um, which which is, I, now, would you go? John Adams has done the theory for this. He did the Dora Idols, I guess, a little bit. He oh, said I didn't that, know that. what he told me, but we were debating real punk at Rochester. There's oh, always I, we think that was probably the punk scene for Idols. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the. I mean, yeah, now yeah. you might have what you call punk. I have a lot of my friends, like my friend Will Carroll. He tries to hold the banner. He has the punk rock picnic, his radio show. But in terms of real punk, I don't go scores. I go Idols. Oh, I would I, I, Idols all day long. I mean, you had some hard. You, I mean, you skinheads would show up. And the I beauty mean, of was, it too, you can go online, type in Idols Rochester, and they'll give you years of who played there. Oh yeah, I mean, they is, had the Dead Kennedys played there. Uh, I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers play there, you know, like way, 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 way back. Um, I mean, they had Agnostic Front, I think, the played damned. there. The Damned. Yeah, I mean, it was them. And then if you wanted more of like the hard rock stuff, it was a Penny Arcade. Um, and then Backstreet's kind of allowed bands that might have been a little too big for the Penny Arcade to play... In Rochester. And I've always said Penny Arcade, I've told the story, I've even written about it on Facebook, one of the weirdest crowds I've seen was the Slayer Show at the Penny Arcade. Yeah. I go in there and there are these dudes all in hooded cloaks, just yeah. with their heads <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking and I've made the comment, what were they going to go do, sacrifice a banana split afterwards to raise Lady in White from <laughs> Charlotte? I mean, they didn't do but they're coming in 
you know, folded with the cloaks. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Shall we find anybody? And all I could picture was, can you see them going for ice cream afterwards? Because <laughs> you know my theory in life. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a twist, please. Nobody, nobody can look tough holding an ice cream. No. So I would see bikers out there. Yep. And they look real tough, burly. They'd have yep. the ice cream. Yep. Yep. But that was, that, was the, that was the other big place to... I mean, you had Penny Arcade, Idols, Backstreets, then there Richmond's. was... Richmond's. Yeah, Richmond's was more of um, like acoustic type stuff. You had Water Street Music Hall that came Scorgies. along. Scorgies. Scorgies. What was the other one that... Um, God, I saw Mary's Danish there. Oh, God. They were on Liberty Pole Way. Heaven? Nope. More the other way. Um I think they do like drag shows there or something. Oh, the Liberty. Was it called the Liberty? Yeah, it was called the Liberty. Then it's got it's got to be. It's it. called the Liberty because I remember I had friends in college used to love to go to the drag shows there. Oh, drag they shows were hilarious. They, I mean, they were good good time and some people did some really good. It's like wow, that's actually pretty good. Uh, I saw Mary's Danish there. Um, they actually saw was it Marilyn Manson there? Might have been Marilyn Manson, but every time I seen him, he sucked. He was terrible. So that's what I've heard. I mean, I he's like, horrendous live, terrible. But I still remember the only incident I, I remember seeing Motorhead first time at Penny Arcade. They blew it so loud you could sit in the parking lot. Oh yeah, they're just they're and, just. And noise. I think Lemmy signed in an electric chair like a thousand guitar as I wasn't there. They said like he get an electric chair and he signed. Oh well, the the best Motorhead Lemmy story. Involves Pat Ball, so oh, tell like, it that, away. <laughs> like that is his favorite band. Like he, like that's the band. I mean, matter of fact, when he got married, he had a Motorhead cake. I mean, that's that's the level he takes this at. Um, and he'll see wherever they go. He go he goes and sees them. You know, most people will travel to see you know the Grateful Dead, Pat Motorhead. Motorhead plays at the Penny Arcade, and Pat's there. Of course, you know, fully expected it. Well, they're in town, and he's like, he invites him back to his house. He was living on Florence Street at the time. We actually, was, he bought Mike Sheldon's old house. And he invites him. They all show up to his house. They take a shower and everything. He has him sign his arm the next day. I mean, and he, like, saran wrapped it. Next day, he's tattoo. down tattooed <laughs> on his arm. And he's got, like, the Simpsons characters of, uh, like, when Motorhead was on yeah. The Simpsons. He's got those. I mean, yeah, that was that was the that was the big deal. There had to be something about if they heard it was Sheldon's about being a gothic. Oh, toad. probably. You yeah, know, obviously. oh my god, it was, it was. It's like when you go to Detroit and you go to you know the Pittsville house where they did all the Jackson Five stuff. It's the same. And also, same I've been thing. watching some Lemmy things. This man was really very intelligent. Very oh yeah, intelligent. and I remember I just read Off the Rails. Finally, Rudy Sarzo's book about touring with Ozzy. Okay. And I'd never, I talked to Rob Mount about this. That he gives the theory that that guy was a whack job flying the plane. And what he says, and you'd have to read the book, give your own opinion, he was estranged from his wife. His wife was on tour on the bus, that he went up there and he'd been loaded on coke and everything, that he tried to crash the bus on purpose to kill her. This is Rudy's. Theory, which might be true, maybe not. You know what, know. though, you're never going to know. No. And he claims, like you know, maybe Randy struggled with them to because he said that play the plane was coming in the way it just buzzed it. But and the other sad part was Sharon said that morning, had she known, somebody told her she wouldn't have let him go up in it. Yeah, well, but it's a real good book. It's a sad book in terms of, and we know this how the state of Ozzy was. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I'm shocked that guy's still alive. But I mean. You know, and the whole Randy thing. Uh, but to this day, yeah. the only footage really is that footage at 31 Studios. Yeah, Fox. That, it was uh, yeah. Fox Studios. And I still, I knew somebody there, and they said to me, oh, oh you like Oz? You could have come in and met him. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, thanks a just, lot. Oh, thanks a lot after the fact. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was just trying to, you know, revive his career. Yeah. And get things moving And again. everybody who's met him said, like, he's just such a nice guy. Yeah. I heard that because if you – I went to the Diary of the Mad Men show and remember Bernie Torme. That was the only time, like, for a couple weeks. Yeah, he, he was – he filled in between Randy and Brad Gillis. And what in, – in Riding the Rails, I guess Brad Gillis was backstage trying to learn the chords. 
I guess yeah, that's what it yeah, said in there. But what happened also is Bernie was more of a Rudy Sarzo's brother was going to get the gig, but the record company already promised it to Bernie. But Bernie came over; he was more blues based, right? And he didn't really mesh. And what Rudy said, like by the time the show at Rochester, he really hit. But when they played, Ozzy was sick. You could hear his voice was cracking. And everything else. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't at the show. I mean, I I had the opportunity to go see the Blizzard of Oz at the Auditorium Theater. That's the one. I've, he mentions it in the book, And I too. didn't go. And I didn't go. And it, like, killed, like there's that one, and I had an opportunity to see Steve Ray Vaughan. Uh, uh, the, actually, the year he... Died in a helicopter crash. And those, I had, are, those are two that I'm like, oh I had my the God. one I don't even want to think about. I tell people it was Blondie, the Ramones, Tom Tom Club up at Darien. And I know people who knew the Ramones and they got me backstage. And I couldn't go that day. It was just something. I was hanging out. By the time it came around, I, yeah. people were yeah, giving yeah. me the brush off about going. I guess they had, like, with the past, they had signed programs. I would have met them. And I don't really care like you about. And I always thought your version, like, in terms of autographs, because you bought, I remember, like, having Sheldon next to me in high school and fans bothering the hell out of us. Yeah, and That yeah. had to be annoying, too, for you. So you realize. Well, it, people learned really quick that I just wasn't going to sign it. Well, anymore. we knew about that. Because yeah. I still get offers. I mean, that yearbook is locked in the safe. <laughs> and I'm not going to sell it. Well, I signed it because you signed a uh, non-disclosure yes, that you but, wouldn't do anything with. And it. I'm usually not that big about stuff like that. I really talk to people about if, you know, I like your work and it's like, thanks a lot, something different. I I'm just like, of the opinion that this is their job. This is my, you know, I have a job. They have a job. I just, you know, they do something that gives some enjoyment to people. Uh, you know, walking up to him and, oh, my God, fawning all over him, give me your autograph. What the hell are you going to do with an autograph? No, or what I did, I always like to say, like, I, I saw you back in, like, Chris Different of all people from Squeeze when he played Miles, he came up asking if he wanted to sign to help him afterwards. What? He comes out because I was oh, bombed. Man. I was literally, I drank before this. By the time I got, the show was like a blur. So I'm sitting there, and I bought his new CD. I try to buy things and support him. Yep, yep. I'm sitting there. He, I'm, I'm almost sitting on a stool like this. He comes up, would you like me to sign it? What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then he got pissy because I asked him about Hillman and Glenn Tilbrook if they're going to get back together. He's like, no. Then they did. And I felt yeah, like money, saying, get money takes care Glenn of Glenn Tilbrook was a lot nicer than you, but it was a good show. But uh, but money, money, money solves everything for some of these artists. I mean, Guns N' Roses, we're never getting back together. Well, well, Remember let's, his let's, final. Let's, let's see. Slash gets a divorce. He's got to pay a shit ton of money to his now ex wife. Yeah, Axel. Yeah, we can do her. I mean, <laughs> it's all money, right? Remember, Eagles, no, remember I, Spinal Tap when they're never, never going to get back together. It. Suddenly Nigel comes in. I smell the gloves, number one in Japan. Yeah. And all of a sudden they get back together. Yep. But I also think oh, the that point. Movie's hilarious. Like that I've movie's always so said. Like I've always said, if you want to let Zeppelin get back together, it's too bad Robert Plant didn't have a gambling problem or something. Because they kept their money, so you never had yeah, a word. I just, you know, the thing is, though, at some point, you got to hang it up. Yeah. I mean, in Ro- to Robert Plant's credit, he says, I-, I can't sing those songs the way the fans want them And sung. also, like, he has a thing about Stairway to Heaven where he just says, it was a different time then. And I don't really, it's not me. Well, that. I mean, you could say that about any song that's written. It's, you know, it's yeah. written in a certain time, your head's in a certain space, and you write the song. But, like, at least he says, I-, I can't sing like I did back then. I'm not going to be able to hit those notes. And so I had not the seen the, the infamous Live Aid performance. I just missed it. Literally, I was watching Live Aid. Yeah. I had my dog out. I came back. And it said Led Zeppelin played. And I guess he they sucked. He oh, you can find notes. it on YouTube. They yeah, were, they I guess were terrible. Putrid. terrible. And they had Phil Collins playing drums. Yeah, and I guess he said in his book he made an ass of himself about the whole thing about Flying over and yeah, I, the, the you know that whole live aid. It was a great, great idea, great concept. Um, Bob Geldof did a really nice job, kind of putting everything together, getting some people out there to play. Uh, but they're not, they're not joking. Like Queen killed everybody. Yeah, they were phenomenal. I mean, but they're just they were phenomenal to begin with live. Yeah, but also. I, I... Last year, I really sort of got into Led Zeppelin again. I had a friend on the show, who my friend Aaron, who 
as a rock photographer and her goal, like she said, she would have loved to have been in the seventies doing it. So I got my Zeppelin phase again. I read yeah. Mick Box's book on Zeppelin, which I think is, and he updated it. I think it's a quintessential book. It really tells it like it is. Yep. And he said a lot about like in terms of plant was exactly that. He knew he couldn't do the notes. And I guess for the reunion show, he was very strict about what they were going to play. And he agreed to it only if, with the set list, he approved every song. He said, Stairway to Heaven, I'll sing it. It's going to be in the middle of the set, and we're going to play it exactly like in the album. We're not going to improvise. Yeah. And he, like certain songs, he omitted because he Can't couldn't do the them notes. anymore. Can't hit the notes, yeah. Um, you know, Zeppelin, Zeppelin's a phenomenal band, influenced a ton of people. But if you grew up in Rochester, I really don't think you needed to own a Zeppelin album because they were on the radio every, like, 10 minutes every 10 minutes they were on the radio oh exactly like i i it it was years years before i bought a zeppelin album i'm like why am i buying it they're turning radio on their own but there's also to go back a little to dread zeppelin the big drama that night was robert plant was playing at the war memorial and he had said that this was his favorite the only cover band he liked is he would make fun of, like, Kingdom Come. Well, there's, like, three songs they've done. They even stole them from us. But right. he said and there were rumors he was going to come down, but he never did. Oh, at, I have no idea. I didn't, but that was I the rumor because they played. He was in town playing his solo tour at the War Memorial that night. Yeah. And he liked – there was a lot of rumors he was just going to stop down afterwards, but it never yeah. happened. Yeah. So. The stuff he does with Allison Krauss is awesome. Yes. Like the the bluegrass, I mean, just really, really, really cool stuff. Um, and I like I like when people do that. Like they kind of step outside of their lane. And then he's got right? his band of joy and yeah, then all his solos. Which is really good. And I really like all that. And the other thing, too, about that, you know, what is I mean? I don't even know what I'm talking about to them now. But, yeah, they, they try to do different things. And I guess when they, they were done, he was sort of glad because he was ready to move on. And the last five years were not good. yeah. yeah. Um, but when you had CMF and everything in MJQ, you pretty much had Led Zeppelin every day. Or you would have when they had Rockline on, they play the side of the album for you. Yeah, you it was to, CMF. It was Led Zeppelin, Allman Brothers, Eric Clapton. Anything Eric Clapton was in, um, you'd have free they'd play free it was just like the same stuff over and over and over and over and over but, and, and you could see the fandom too because i saw the firm and jason yeah. bonham's band open firm what if it was just bonham then or whatever yep. Yep. but the fans were led zeppelin crazy where, oh without a doubt where when page brought out the bow it sounded like he played a little bit of white summer the yep. crowd would just go insane. Oh yeah, it was, it was, people were there, people were there to see Jimmy Page. And when he went to talk, Paul Rogers would hand over the mic from just to say something. You yep. can even hear because people were screaming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I mean, it was, you know, Zeppelin's done some offshoot stuff that's been pretty cool. But a lot of bands have done things like that. Yeah, and then remember, you almost had a Led Zeppelin reunion tour plant page walking through Clarksdale. I mean, they did the, you know, those two were together and they went on tour. It's almost, the, you know. Yeah, it's kind of the same. They weren't cheap. I mean, they didn't call themselves Led Zeppelin or anything. Right, 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 right. And I've never heard his stuff with Coverdale. Page, I guess he did an album. Yeah, he did, he did something with Coverdale. And he did, um, I have his Black Crows album. Where he played with the Black Crows, he does a. Oh, I live, that one. It's he does a live set with them with Chris Robinson singing the Black Crows, but he oh. plays. They do all Zeppelin songs. Oh, and of course, yeah, they do it hard. That, they do it hardcore because it's obvious. Yeah, but I would. I, that would be. That would actually be pretty cool. It's a good album. And another one too is I was thinking about like seeing Rush, and I remember last time I saw them was 2010. I just decided to stop because I said this was Neil's best drum solo I ever saw. Okay, that's it. Well, yeah, I mean, Rush, just phenomenal musicians. You either like them or you don't. Um, there's some stuff that I think is really cool, and there's some stuff that's like, okay, yeah, like, we can move on. Um, you know, I mean, it's just different. They did, you know, it was everybody stat, everybody would go there and just want to see. I don't know, it was, that's a kind of a weird band because you were either there to see Neil or you were there to see Alex. Or you're there to see Getty, and then there's a few people that want to see all three of them. But you know, there's the drummers that are like, "Okay, wait for this drum solo," and then there's the guitar players. 
Alex is phenomenal. Okay, let's wait for that. And then there's got to okay, let's watch them. But I seen them kind of boring live. Just the one show, boring, Power you know, Windows. But the phenomenal band, phenomenal Power Windows, music. they claimed, I read, Getty said, this was the tour we really thought we had it together. To me, that was the most boring show I've ever seen of them. Yeah, I mean, up on stage, you know, they just, they're standing there doing it. Some lights are going off. It's like, you know, they're not like, I don't feel like they were getting the crowd into it. You know, there's lots of bands that have phenomenal music, and they just get the crowd going. Getty Rush, did it. Rush for just hold came your fire. out. And, for Hold Your Fire, yes, because they crushed us. And Getty kept saying to step back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the way Getty did a typical Canadian way he wasn't step back was, looks like you people are getting crushed up here. Maybe you should step back. Yeah, yeah. But that was the one. But I thought Power Windows, that tour, was they were boring. Yeah, I, mean, I, can't, I can't remember what to. I mean, well, I seen them a couple times, two or three times. Um, Fast Way opened up for them once. Yeah, but I remember uh, the beach ball. There was, I still remember yeah, the, I was, the beach ball went on stage. Con, no, Coney Hatch was Iron Maiden. I mean, I, I, I try to think of these opening bands that I've seen. And like, I have problems actually... with that sometimes. That's what I was telling you before. that Because I remember Jeffrey opened for somebody. I can't remember who. Because remember Greg Goldie, the guitar player. Yeah, it might have been yep. Dio for Sacred Heart. It might have been Dio. Yeah, been yeah. Dio. Oh, no, no. Sacred Heart, I think it was Megadeth. Man, see, that's I what I mean. Megadeth opened up for that. But I still remember he pointed at me, and it was like a spinal tap stage because they had the <laughs> yeah. dragon and everything on it, and the dragon had a rip well, in all it. Right. So, Ronnie James Dio, somebody please tell me how, how that guy's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That guy, his stuff with Rainbow... Unbelievable! I right? just pulled that his out stuff, again. His actually, stuff with Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, unbelievable. And then you leave that and you go to Black Sabbath, and some people will say this is sacrilege, but I actually like Sabbath with Dio better than Sabbath. A lot of with, people with, did. With I remember because that was like around. But I, have you I ever mean, heard his Live Evil album? Because it's hard to get a hold of. That's the one. No, I saw. I that was the return with. That was almost like when Ozzy did speak of the, whatever the the live album was, the old right. Sabbath songs. But that's when but, he but, did. I mean, you're talking Rainbow. You're. Ta- I mean, Elf. If you want to go before that, but Rainbow, Sabbath, and then he comes out with his solo stuff. And yeah, his solo stuff got a little contrite after after a while. But Master of the Moon. And was- that guy's voice was unbelievable. It's a. But I can make the same argument with Ozzy. How come Ozzy's not in the Rock and Roll Hall at- of Fame? As as a solo artist, oh yes, definitely. Like, I think he's influenced more people as a solo artist than he did with Sabbath. The thing, like too, is Ronnie James Dio and the Prophets when he's like in his teens doing doo wop. Yeah, well, you, you can look start it up somewhere. too. You can look it up. You got to start somewhere. Now, Ozzy's first two albums with Randy to me are like, oh, those uh, classics. You can't, you you can't. I don't think you can beat those. No, and that's the thing. They're like classic, and I would put them against like any of his Sabbath stuff anytime. But I'm of the opinion, like Randy Rhodes might have done one more album with him. In the and, book, and other than one more. What Rudy pop, says maybe. in the book is he was going to go to Toronto to play on Speak of the Devil. Speak of the Devil. He first, but he, what he told Rudy when they were doing the tour, what he would do, he'd go off and find a music teacher at every city. Yep. And, one, and what happened was he ended up showing the music teacher the the licks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean he would when he started his mother got him lessons. You know, they own this his mother owned this music store, you know, this music education store or whatever. Um and she hired somebody to teach him in like I want to say within a year, it could have even been less than that, the teacher's like I, I can't He's 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 learned everything I got. What he said, Rudy said to him that he's going to do one more album and tour with Ozzy, then he was going to leave. And it's always yeah, imagined the possibilities. Have been by that. Wouldn't have been shocked. And I by guess that. Ozzy was obsessed in terms of after him of finding the next guitar god. That's why I guess he had a flap with Brad Gillis had to get Jakey e. Lee. Well, I mean, I, I think Sharon drives a lot of that. You know, looking for a certain look or whatever. Because I mean, he had the opportunity. From what I understand is like George Lynch came in, and they were like, "Okay, this dude can play," and then Jakey Lee came in, you know, and he's got different look, longer hair. I mean, you know, at that point, George Lynch looked like he should have been in, you know, The Fix or something like that. Right? You look, you look fabulous. I look homeless. <laughs> and, and and 
they gave it to, to Jake. Phenomenal guitar player. I think he did some great albums. Um, you know, but then after that, you know, then you get Zach, Zach who kind of had that, at that moment, had that Randy kind of look. But he's had some phenomenal But I guess, players. like, the thing when they got back together with Zach, the thing was he had to shave his beard because he said his beard smelled so bad. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't doubt I that. I saw Black Label Society at Water Street. I've seen Black Label Society, Armory. Oh, Judas Priest tour? Was it the Priest tour? It was their farewell tour, quote no, unquote. No, it, they had. Um, it was Thin Lizzy with this Brian no, Robertson, and then it was. They had uh, Zach. Uh, um, Seven Dust. And there was another. There was a, a band, Seven Dust. I can't remember the first band. Um, and then. Black Label. I've seen Zach at the uh, Eastman Kodak Theater. Uh, saw him in Chicago when I was living out there. I've seen him like three or four times, I think. I thought he was the best. I saw it was the Judas Priest quote-unquote farewell tour that wasn't. So this tour was Thin Lizzy, which is Brian Robinson, obviously, yeah. not Phil Lennon. Yeah, yeah. And I thought there was something really missing with OKK Downing with Priest. And I thought, it's not the same. I thought Zach stole the show in terms of guitar that night. There's no question. Well, yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy is unbelievable. I mean, you know, I mean, he does pick harmonics a little too much. but he. Well, he was like, like his, just too his, fast. His stuff, his... Pride and Glory stuff, which is like Southern rock, is awesome. I mean, my wife loves it. I mean, my wife's not a heavy music connoisseur, doesn't really like it, deals with it when I'm in the car and I can control the radio. Um, but the Pride and Glory the, the in Book of Shadows, his Book of Shadows, Zach, Zach Wild Book of Shadows and the Pride and Glory, loves them. And I then mean, we phenomenal. Have- it's like <clears throat> It's like listening to kind of like a more modern... Almond Brothers, a little bit. Now we're going to talk, and I guess that's the way Slash wanted to go on the Guns N' Roses album after Use Your Illusion and everything. That was part of the fight, but that's what Duff said. He really wanted to go for more Southern rock, so we'll never know. Ah, who knows? But who we're going to get maybe the heaviest band that you and I like, and we go every year, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember, like, Getting a hold of you. Hey, they told me at Love and Cup they're on sale. Oh, I got tickets. I <laughs> and went. I they, blew. And you know what? These local these local guys, musicians, I, they did a phenomenal job. I didn't realize. A phenomenal job. My friend Kurt Johnson and my good friends Ken and Baby, Katie, Ben and Katie Morey were in it. And they're playing up there. And I just noticed them. And I guess last year is the first year they officially got the rights from Henson. So they don't have to pay a fee or anything anymore. Well, I think last year was when I saw him. Um, well, I saw him, but it was so packed, and it, it was oh man, it was packed. They did, but they do a phenomenal. Job. Literally, I told you, you're like, I'm getting tickets. Yeah, I got tickets. I took Lisa O'Brien. We met up there. Literally, go in there. It's so jammed. We yeah. had to go in the corner. Yeah, but I, I mean, they get that. You know, people bring their kids, and the kids are sitting up front, and they hand out the little kazoo's and stuff like this. And, and they do. They start the show with they do sesame seed songs, yep. and they act them out like they somebody they put the masks yep. on. Yep. And then they get into Emmett Otter because I suppose Emmett Otter in itself wouldn't be long enough. Also, no, be. no, no, no. I mean, you know, there's only <laughs> I think there's only what three songs in that move, three four songs in that. Move. But Leslie, we had Leslie on here from Love and Cup, and she said that it sells out every year. Oh, I, it, well, it sold sold out multiple nights. Yeah, that's the thing too. So I saw it on a Sunday afternoon. I don't right. know when you went. Uh, we were evening. Uh, we went on an evening. I want to say it was a Saturday evening, and uh, had some food and some drinks while we were there. It was good. It was a good time. Yeah, I think but you could buy. I mean, you could you're not doing it now with COVID, but uh, yeah, actually, was I was time. just going to say that again. I had Leslie on, and she said that you know I tend to I guess already. This was before the incidental crap. And they were saying, last concert I might have seen, I saw my friend Meg Williams over there last Friday. And they were saying they're just hoping to stay above water this winter. Before she was saying around October, they were going to try to have bands inside. But now with this crap going down. Yeah, the hard thing's going to be getting through the winter. I mean, in the, in, at least in the summer and the gooder, the, gooder, the, the nicer weather uh, days, um, you can have people outside and kind of social distance. So the, so the tables you're losing inside. You're making up outside, um, but that's not happening. Let's see if winter. we can figure out the incidental stuff, too, where 
you can't advertise you're having a band. The band can't be playing for anybody. It's just got to be there in the background. And they can only be paid with tips. There uh, well, there are people that would still do it. I think there were, there's people that And I that do know how they're getting in. It seems- I am, well, I am starting to see promotions for shows. But it's more down south. Yeah. You know, I saw one. saw one the other day. It was uh, Blackberry Smoke. And the wild feathers, um, and I want to say it was in Tennessee. I do know, like Virginia. I usually on Sundays I watch Ellie Venable's radio show every week. She always has some good guests, and I do notice, like on her page, she's from Kilgore, Texas, and she's the one I played on the other episode. That they are, she's touring regionally a little bit, yeah, a little bit. But it depends on the area of the country. Uh, for, you know, it just depends on the leadership in those areas if they're going to allow it or not. Yeah, and that's the thing. And but I also the best social distancing sign I've seen. Meg played at the Sportsman's Tavern in Buffalo, which I guess got in trouble now with the liquor license and they're suing. But anyways, they have a sign up: separate the length of a cow, and they've got a cow up with sides. Oh, and I think that's kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pe- but, people have been getting a little uh, creative with the stuff. Yeah, but it's like you have to be like you never know what dictates going to come down next and how arbitrary it's going to be. Or... Uh, this is, yeah, uh, I think on the last show I said whether you believe in wearing masks or not, if you're going to somebody's business, put a mask on because they're required to do it by the state. And if you don't, one, you're probably going to end up screaming and yelling and making an ass out of yourself, and somebody's going to videotape it, and it's going to go online, and then, like, you're just going to look like a fool. But above anything, just support the business by doing it for the 10 minutes in your store so they don't have to worry about losing their health uh, certificate or their liquor license or whatever it might be. As much as you don't like wearing it, because I don't like wearing them, I do it just to support the, the and I'm going owner. to. I have to get a couple Count Chocolas. They're on sale for a birthday present for a friend in October. I'm going to get them now. So I'm looking at going to the store this week. Get in there with a mask. Get in. Get in. Get, get, get out. Get the heck out. Get in. Get out. But I heard a story recently. A friend said it was at a Tops, and it might have been Mount Reed, and she's not really sure where it was, but her sister saw it. I guess a guy came in, an old older man came in without a mask, and a woman started berating him so much he started crying, and they called the police on him. And it turned out he was a war vet, and he just, because of his health situation, he couldn't wear a mask. Yeah, I mean... So there's also that where people go mask crazy, where maybe you should also think some people, they do have conditions where they just can't do it. Yeah, I mean, and then that person can say she has pre pre existing condition, and she's worried that she'll, you know, get COVID because people aren't wearing a mask. You can go, but I mean, you can make it's excuses. Crazy, you can make it? excuses left and right on whatever. Just respect people and be nice. Why, yeah. I mean, why do you got to scream and yell at people? What's the point? No, and I, I mean, haven't what, really. What are like you gonna, I said, I've in seen... today's world, screaming and yelling. I guarantee you, there's five people that got their cell phone out videotaping you, and you're going to be on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, what other Twitchy or whatever the hell the other social media is, and you're just going to look like an asshole. And then you're going to try to defend it, and you're going to get in an argument with somebody, and then it's going to go back and forth, and you're going to look like a bigger asshole. I still wonder so if that just video be of me nice. is out there, because there's a video from years ago. I was cleaning a place with my cleaning thing. Yeah, yeah. And I had the hose out, and, the, and I got my nuts stuck on the hose. <laughs> it just sucked my nuts. What, dude? And I'm just dude. picturing the bank camera. What? I, what? <laughs> the bank camera must have got it. I expected it to be on YouTube. I had the... The vacuum down, and someone got by my pants and just got me in the nads. And I had a struggle dude, with the turn. No, off. man. Dude, so first, <laughs> what it's got to be, and I'm just afraid it's still going to be out there. Okay, that, that's stuff you just don't need to be sharing, man. Oh. You just don't need to be sharing that. <laughs> but I wonder, because everything's public oh, now. I'm like you're sh- walking- to your point, I'm shocked that they'd, you know, the security guard doesn't come in and, like, holy crap, check this out, and then take it and put it up on the... Yeah, and I'm thinking even, like, think about it like you're walking your dogs. Like, I saw a dude walking his dog, and he went to go get some chunks out of his butt with his hand. And could you see, like, somebody oh, just walking by and just seeing it? it? Look at this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, like, yeah. putting a video yeah, up there yeah, or yeah. something on there. Yeah. Or everything. It's like, what do people do? It's like, I could see, and I'm sure there's horror stories about, like, people getting beaten up and people do they help call the cops no they get their phone out and they video it that's uh, oh my god that like 
somebody would be, I don't know, they get hit by a car or have a heart attack or something, and the first thing people do is grab their phone, let's videotape. How about you help the person out? I mean, I get you might not want to move him because or hurt him or her because you can, but instead of videoing, call the police, call the EMTs, help. But nope, you got to have six people videoing in case something happens, and it, it's just like holy. And crap. I never like the term influencer. I look at influencers. Well, Jim Jones and the People's Temper, they were influencers, <laughs> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything because somebody recommends it or anything else. As a society. The people that we have put up on a pedestal it is pathetic. Just because of some stupid social media presence is embarrassing. It is so embarrassing. It's not even funny. And these people think they are so special because all these other individuals that, I don't know, don't have a life, can't get out on their own. Would rather sit and watch some somebody do some stupid video, or I mean, there was people trying to be famous. I I might get this wrong, but the 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 concept's the same. But there was this this couple, boyfriend girlfriend, and they would, would do stupid stunts because they're trying to go viral and be an influencer. And the guy has his girlfriend shoot him with the gun, and he's holding he's holding a, a like a, a phone book or something, and it fucking kills him. <laughs> And all I sit there, I'm like, survival of the fittest, and you definitely ain't it. Well, did you see there's a candidate running for mayor in South Carolina? Look it up if you didn't see it. She staged her own kidnapping. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm going, I'm like, watching are you this. Kidding me? I'm watching this too, and having done a little film and done this, done this I look at it and go, she's looking at the camera too much. This is a uh, work. Well, hold on. So you're looking at a camera filming your kidnapping. <laughs> Why aren't you using the camera phone and calling 911? Hmm. Oh, wait, no, I've got a camcorder with me. Give me a break. Well, when I started, like, when we started to do this, we also went around. I want to, one of the reasons we did this is we wanted to just do something, not only payola to my friends, which some people think it is, but that. And to try to get a write-in campaign for Gothic Toad to reunite because they don't yeah, give not a happening. fuck, you know. Not happening. But we were looking at them and going, there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of bad ones. We're going to do something that people want to hear. And maybe we – I always use the Whiskey Daredevils line. If you ever go to see the Whiskey Daredevils show, they go, I, it's probably not up here. It's probably not down here. But it's probably just like mid-fi. You know, it's pretty entertaining for an hour. So I went around to look at podcasts and stuff online. Yeah. And what I came off was, man, a lot of these suck. Yeah, I mean, there's – I mean, I listen to podcasts. Um, I'll listen to the ones that do, like, uh, investigative crime or something, and it's like a series. Those are pretty cool. Ask the Mortician is a new one I found, which I think is a good one. And she's a form, and it's also it's a professional. It's somebody who's a mortician, and she talks about, like, what happened to the victims of the Titanic and before you say, yeah, they drowned. You know, the bodies. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, what happened to the all these things, and she explains, like, in detail what yeah. happened to... Uh, you know what happens when this? That'd be pretty cool. And she's really good. And she's really funny. She's got a way of presenting it too. And I found a couple others, but I find a lot of internet personalities. If you watch a couple, eh, it's kind of good, but then they grade on you really fast. Yeah. And no. also, some I call like a lot of shows. It's the self-important person who lives in their parents' basement and has no life who thinks they're the expert on everything. Yeah. I and mean, they like the, look the, at me. Well, the the one thing I like about the concept of of yours, I mean, carnival of randomness. It's random. There's no theme. It, it goes all over the place. You know, one day you have somebody come in and they're talking comic books. The next day somebody's coming in and they're talking, you know, art house music. I'm not going to bring the person out, but I'll say it wasn't Sheldon. One of our guests, I think the, my moment of true showing character on this show and taking one for the team, we had guests on one time. The guy sneaks to me. He cut the most soul-sucking, juicy fart, silent. <laughs> and it got in my face, and I'm trying to talk. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to say who well, it is. You got to remember, that was probably before COVID-19, where you could have had a mask to kind of take away and some of it. this was before COVID-19, yeah, yeah. and then we were bunched together, and I was literally crying, and yeah, people what, can't see. How was that? I'll tell you. I'll send you a message. <laughs> I don't besmirch my guests. But, so but I mean... You know, it's all over the place. There's, and and it's, it, you know, you start on one topic and you end up on something else. 
Yeah. I mean, we started on music. We're and talking we're about talking. juicy farts, right, and right. I'll talk. I'll tell another <laughs> story about a happen? fart. Yeah. This happened for a while. I was on a kick of this was like. I literally reunited with a lot of people I saw from Fisher, and it was basically a case of our. I became friends with Pat Barrius, the cover band Crazy Train. Have you ever seen them? No, I haven't. He was, if you saw him, the closest you could come out to Ozzy seeing him. And he was just a country boy from Kentucky. Okay. And great guy. Still stay in touch with him. Just, I think he's just, the way he sees life is terrific. And. He got all excited because I told him my mom used to play bingo with Gene Cornish, and he's like, yeah. wow, they used to come in. I bet they were bragging about it. I don't think my mom was bragging about me, but at any rate. So he was playing, and what he, it turned out he was doing Ozzy to get his son through college. Now he plays blues. Okay. But at any rate, he lives in Kentucky, and you don't see him here anymore because basically all the places they played are gone. Yeah, yeah. Penny Arcade was a big yeah. one. They're all, and Bugs are not big in the cover band. So at any rate... We I, for a while and it would be a thing you get like a group of friends you go have make your own garbage plates at the house go see the group. Yep. So I got into cover bands and remember for a while a lot of tribute cover bands would come around here. Yep. So there's one band Y Y Z it was out at Alexander's on by where Roarbox was down Buffalo Road. Yeah. It was the Jam Room Alexander's. Yeah. yeah. It was it was a nudie bar for a while Toppers. So go down there and it's Y Y Z it's a Rush band. So we get there early we're sitting in a booth. Somebody, we call it the atomic cloud of death. Somebody caught one somewhere. I see my friend just look at me and grimace, and it hit me. And we just said, what the fuck? We all got out fanning and everything. The, wor- the worst I had. The worst see, we go into the, all topics here. Yeah, you want to know, the more, the more but, you know. But the, the, the worst I experienced, and it had nothing to do with bodily function, but I can't remember the bar. It was Fisher Days. Um, but in East Rochester, there's this one bar that's over by the railroad tracks, kind of down and around. Adams of Richards. Wait a minute. PJs. 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 There, was uh, pre- there was actually called Prince George's, I found out later on. Well, PJs. We're in there, and somebody dropped, uh, on purpose, like a stink bomb. A real stink A real one. A real st- Cleared the place out. Cleared it out. My eyes were wa- oh my god! I mean, you hear about these, but it was so bad, so bad. Remember in the day though too, when I used to laugh at thinking like it was it was like that row of bars in East Rochester and all the college students went to. Yeah. But the idea of the and there was also the one in the in Pittsburgh too. You had to find figure out where it was. It was like like a brick building. You talk thirsties. Thirsties. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to go down there, but. You would go down, and nobody really cared about IDs. As I remember IDs. It wasn't, it wasn't I remember like people showing ID, and the the bouncers literally said, "Try to get a better picture next time." Let yeah, them in. I mean, dude, that's how they made their money. And but these days now, forget it. You, you, <laughs> it's not like it was back in the day. Back in the day, I mean, now we, like they'll take it you're done before they look at it go nah man this is just too bad i can't look in update this and then come back next week yeah it would be kind of that it was a little bit more chill but i don't know i just think i i just think the legal environment just kind of changed everything yeah so and i always remember the senior week whatever it was called going out there that was just insane. The, the bus ride and everything. We found the bus driver doing shots and literally walked. Se- senior the, week for who? It was like uh, whatever they called it. Was like senior week at Fisher. They brought a yeah, bus. I didn't, was do bar hopping. I, didn't, I didn't do it. Well, any it was Rob the Caesar, Jim Vito, yeah. all those guys. I didn't do any of that stuff. I don't blame you. It wasn't that. <laughs> but anyways, I, we found the bus driver started doing shots. So we went back to get the car. Yeah. Well, yeah. well it's like a hundred days too. Like at high school, it really. Yep. I think we tried to burn the school down. And well, they, I mean, there's a few things that happened at that school um, that I don't think would happen now. I mean, I tell my kids all the time, it's tougher to be a kid today than it was when I was. I mean, everything's videoed, monitored, like tracked. Um, they know your Metal every detectors. Mood. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, everybody's got everything recorded. I mean, back in the you could... You could sit there and say, nope, wasn't me. Oh, well, so and so. It wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Now they're going to, it wasn't me. Well, I got a video here that looks like you. (laughs) I remember, actually, Rob DeCesar said it to me one time. He talked about, remember when we went to school, you'd be up late, you'd do whatever, you'd come in, 
get through school, go home. Nowadays, my yep. daughter, you know, Sarah, goes, I'll get a note. Did she have enough sleep? She yawned in class once. She didn't seem like she was paying attention. You know, they micromanaged it. Um. Yeah, I think the pressure on the kids is a lot greater. You know, I don't. I don't think when we were kids there was this big of a push for college. You got to go to college. Got to go to college. Got to go to college. Now it's like you got to go to college. Get good, get good grades in high school. Get good grades in high school. Got to go. To I'll give you a great one, right? So my youngest graduates, right? So now both my kids are out of high school. And Candagua did a nice job. They did at Bristol Mountain. It comes down, gets in, gets in the car, and we start driving. I turn around, okay, I, and I, I look at both of them. I go, okay. So now that both of you are out of high school, you know how like I was always on you guys. You you guys better get good grades. You better not go to summer school. And I go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we ever heard. Yeah, I went to summer school twice. My kids' draw jaws just dropped. <laughs> They're like, what? 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 No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I didn't want that to be... Well, Dad, you went. No big deal. So, like, like I hit it. For, I had all my, my friends and my... You can't say a word to them, whatever. But it was like... High school to me was just like a, a means to an end. This is what you... Yeah, I, I actually looked at it. I always said... I would have gone back to tell myself, but I knew what I said. Look, I have four years here. Get through it. It's got to take me where I got to go. Right. The other thing I would give your kids advice, though, too, if they ever go to college, they wake up and they go to a cafeteria and the cafeteria applauds them. Transfer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, they. So my oldest heard that story when he was getting ready to go to Clarkson, and my youngest just heard that story. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the to... smartest move I ever made. <laughs> probably the smartest move I ever I don't know what the hell I did. Would you I like did. to share with the class, or is it personal? Right. So, so, no, it's fine. Um, don't say we don't try to educate so I went to I went to Cortland my first year of college. I went to Cortland. And uh, just to give you some context, the year I went was the year they were voted number one party school in the country. And I do believe I helped move them from, like, number five to one. Um, and this this one day, we, we there was, like, I think there was probably about 12 of us. We got together and we were going to go to this frat party and, you know, we just call it pre-gaming or whatever and we're drinking and all this stuff. And uh, now it's time to get to the party. And I remember us all leaving the dorm to walk to the party. I remember only two of us making it to the party, me and another guy. Everybody else, well, I remember one kid tried to tackle a tree and, like, a bunch of them had to then carry him to, you know, the nurses. I don't know what happened to everybody else. But I remember walking in to the party, and then that's it. I don't remember anything else after that. I remember waking up. You know, you're awake, but your eyes aren't open. And you're like, please, God, let this be my room. I open my eyes. And I'm like, okay, yep, this is my room. All right, we're good. That's a good start. And I'm like, okay. I'm looking at the clock. The clock is like 4 o'clock or something. And I'm like, holy oh, shit. All right, I got to get moving here. And I get up, and I'm, I'm in no shape to do anything. Go into the, the the shower area, and I just laid down. <laughs> I mean, I'm like out. Like, I'm done. I can't do anything. I finally get up, and I'm, okay, I shower, and I am go back to my dorm and the one other guy that I went that we made it to the to the frat party with, I see him coming out of his dorm and he's looking like just like me, like where the hell are we? And he goes, "Want to go get some dinner?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." He goes, "Well, let me take a shower." I'm like, "Fine." So he comes in, you know, he gets done, knocks on my door, I get up, I'm like, "Okay, we can go eat." Yeah, all right. So we walk to the cafeteria area. In the cafeteria at that point, you kind of took took these stairs up, and then you showed your ID right at the top of the stairs, and you turn, and then there's a the cafeteria. And we both do it, and we turn, and we start walking, and the place just, everybody stands up clapping. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell? Are they clapping? And, they're cl- and they're like pointing at us and going, oh my God, yeah. And I'm like, what the hell did we do, man? <laughs> And we sit down, people are like, dude, that was unbelievable. I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. I got done with dinner, went back, called my father. I'm like, I need to transfer. I have to transfer. 
I will fail out. There you go, kids. I will you fail out. You have been out. mentored right there. I had the one. You ever get like... Well, hold one, on. So then I, guess, so I, I transfer. I go to Fisher. <laughs> now, so I wasn't there freshman year. So sophomore year, I'm there. And matter of fact, I meet up with Rob. <laughs> He's like, hey, there's a party happening this uh, Saturday. You want to go? Yeah, sure. I'll go. And I show up to this party. I'm like, okay, Rob, when's the party start? <laughs> He's like, well, the party's going on. Like, our pre-games at Cortland were like... <laughs> Way better than this. This goes back to actually the thing. One of the stories, I got to go in a circle here a little bit, but one of the ones we had, you ever get, like I had a connection where I worked, like a Mr. G's, where, oh, come on, there's a party at RIT, and you're like a senior in high school. We went down there. They grabbed my friend. The admission, if you were like a high school, they turned you over and they funneled you. So we ran. So I had no idea. Oh, no, I mean... You know, the, the, I, I guess the one of the really cool things about going to Cardinal Mooney is you had kids that went to that school from a whole bunch of different towns. Yes. You know, Gates, Spencerport, Tilton, Greece, Chi Lai, Churchville, right? And you'd hang out with them, and then you'd meet kids from those high schools that didn't go to Mooney. Yeah. Right? So you actually had a bigger, like, sphere of, of influence than if you just went to your local high school that you were yeah. that you were in the districts for. And plus, I also had my friends at home from Gates, so I knew the Gates kids right, from. Right, right, right. So, so, so part of that, because you went to Mooney, you were friends with people that went to Gates. You were friends with people who went to Spencerport. You were friends with people who went to Greece Athena, Greece Olympia, um, Churchville Chilai, just because your friends at Mooney were in those people's neighborhoods. And then you go see them. And it would be like a football scrimmage over the summer. We'd be on the bus. They'd see other schools. You'd hear people on the bus screaming names because they knew these because they were from that neighborhood. So with that whole Mooney thing, I'm of the opinion you found out about way more parties than if you just went to Gage Chilai. Yeah. Or you just went to Greece Olympia. In those days, we would just drive around and look for parties and show up. Well, and then. When you go to college, now you got a whole bunch of people going to all different places. So now you're, you know, and, and maybe you're a ju- you were a junior, and the kids you were hanging around, some of the kids were seniors, and they go. So now you're a senior in high school, and you find out about the RIT co- party, the Geneseo party, the Brockport party, the the uh, Oswego party, the Cortland party, and you'd road trip down. So. From that aspect, yeah, Mooney was great. <laughs> they had its good points, its bad points, its weird points. But you saw on one of the biggest revelations we have this week, you saw Bill and Ted, didn't you? I did. Yes. Review. Uh, it's kind of what you think it would be. Um, you, you know, for, for, I, I think they tried to kind of. So you had Bill and Ted, the first one, which is they're never going to beat that one. That's they're never, never beat. And you've that. dust, wind. Dude, <laughs> put them in the Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, yeah. <laughs> execute the bogus. <laughs> so, um, you know, it didn't have a lot of that, like that stuff in it. It didn't have the the the, the one, dude, the, 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 like the, yeah, like the lyric left lefer- the lyric. References. And they're the Wild Stallions still with the Y. Oh yeah, they they still are. Um, you know, they do some goofy stuff. Deaths in it, but Bill and Ted have daughters. And the one da- and and the one daughter. So Ted Theodore Logan, his daughter, she just drove me like she tried too hard to be like Keanu Reeves, like too hard. It was like it was annoying. It was annoying, but I did watch it, so I've seen them all. I'm- and we still this goes back, and you've forgotten this about Jeff and Rob's excellent concoction drink. Yeah, and this did, was yeah, at yeah. a party. Yep. You and Sheldon came on. It was on Howard Road, and we started fiddling with stuff. Yeah, well, I know it had, back then. and I know it had grape Kool Aid, had vodka, had some other stuff in it, and we deemed it quite good. And the ingredients are lost for the ages. I know they sold them at Gothic Toad Shows for a while. Yeah, that was bootleg stuff, though. Yeah, yeah, we we because because we felt that um, that concoction was a little too much. It was, and you know, we 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 respected our fans, and we wanted well, to make the sure thing that was, somebody like the house somebody we went was at, trying to do something. The house we went at for it, they were lightweights, and then when some of us came in, drained everything. Oh yeah, but then they they got the bragging rights later because you would hear at school, oh man, I had this big party. It's like it was lame till we got there. We cleaned you out. Yeah, I mean, you know. 
it was a lot easier back then to, well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's easy now to get stuff too. I don't know. But you typically, when you'd show up, you'd have a bottle with you or like a 12 pack or six pack, right? And, there and, was a guy, and, Scott Schmidt, Schmitty, and this was a friend of Sammy's and Rob's and mine, the Gates. He's like, he went, to, but he was one of these guys who just didn't care. You'd go out one night, you might end up in Toronto. He had oh, that yeah. sense like that. Yeah, yeah. We but would he would do like all that. the time, just drive around Gates looking for parties. Oh, and just drive, crash him? Drive around. Go in. What he would do, he'd teach him Cardinal Puff, which was a drinking game. Remember the good old days of the drinking game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, still do that and I was stuff. good at quarters. I was, yeah. you know, I was good at flip top a little bit. But he, there was a game Cardinal Puff, and basically, just to not get into it, you had to do get a card, do these goofy, you know, clap your knees, yep. drink. And what he would do is he would get them on that while his buddies would take cases and steal them. <laughs> <laughs> but he would just drive around and end up at any party. Oh, we used to do it all the time. I mean, me and, you know, I, I talk about at the beginning, I guess, bringing this full circle. Me and Pat Ball, we, we'd get together and, you know, hey, what are we going to do today? I don't know. And we'd sit there and go, want to go to Toronto? Yeah, cool. And You've heard the, the Dave Blodges story more than once. He's in, but Pat Ludwig, he's at Romig's before class. It's crappy out. Okay. And Dave will tell you this story if you haven't heard it. I think you have. It's a Monday. It's shitty out. Yeah, hey, what do you want to do? You want to go to class? And we go to Florida. So Dave calls his mom and says, oh, Mom, we're, not, we're just going to go to Florida. Let's drive to Florida for the week. <laughs> so I, you laugh. I did that with Samino. I called him up one day. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Want to go down to Florida for spring break? Sure. When are we going to go? I'm like, I, get out, I, I go, I get out of class at noon. I'll pick you up. I'll be there by one. The best part, like, though, okay, was cool. still. And we just got and just went. Best part, road trip food. Stopping in the convenience oh. to get the crap. Oh, yeah. You'd get these, uh, oh, God, what are, the, what are those little French fries that had the little guy on it? Um, hot fries. Hot fries. But what was the guy's name? The, the, it's like Andy Cap. Andy Cap, yes. Andy Cap. Those were like, the, you'd get those and like a Pepsi or a Coke. Giant and a leader, lead. Joe yep. Cola in the day. Joe, Joe Cola, Joe yeah. Cola. See, my biggest, like, cutting out of class was there was a door you could go down. We found that we left it open. And I would go to get concert tickets. I would just, like, bail, like, if a, t- if a show went on sale. Yeah, I would just get, leave. I'd like, just yeah. walk out the door. <laughs> i just walk out more the door. More and more, I look go back at the record theater and then just come back. Like, more and more. I ran. I went to the House of Guitars, Zoom there, and got back. I did. This was my Fast Times at Ridgemont High moment. Um, I, I had typing class, and I had type with Rob Mount. And so Rob's parents owned a pharmacy, and he always had typing. I never had typing paper, nothing. I'd meet Rob at his locker room. I'm like, dude, you got typing paper? He's like, yeah. Are you ever going to get it? I'm like, no, man. You can get me covered. Fine, here you go. And one, one day I go, hey, I'm going to be a little late. Tell tell the, I forget who the hell the teacher was. Mr. Tell, McGraw, maybe? Was it probably. Him. I go, tell, tell him I'm going to be a little late. Go, okay, what are you doing? I go, I'm going to go to Pontillo's and get a pizza. <laughs> Drove up there, got a pizza, walked into the class with a pizza. I bought pizza for everybody. Well, I think, oh, like Spicoli. Yeah, that's so exactly you it. You're going to share it with the class? Oh, I put it out, like, here's pizza oh, for I everybody. I had the one where just, like, somebody stole my gym clothes. Somebody stole my- <laughs> Why? Maybe with those brothers to sniff yeah, them. I don't yeah, want to yeah. know. But yeah, So I told yeah, the gym teacher, I'm like, and he's, and he's putting it on me. You forgot him, didn't you? And, no, I didn't. Well, so I finally said, he's like, well, you're going to go up in your underwear. I'm like, no, I'm not. So was, so I said, well, I'll go get him if I forgot him. So I just went home. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. I would have done so much more had I known. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it was easier once you got a car. Yeah. But I I figured out a way from where I lived how to cut through neighborhoods, <laughs> hop fences, this house, hop this fence, and they have a dog go here, and then you get a Kodak, cut through there, hop their fence at their parking lot. and Oh, yeah, we all figured out the routes. I had the oh. escape routes all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how it was fun and everything. But see how we go from music to COVID to high school. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get some more of the band back here. Not a reunion, but some of the band back here in September to talk. Yeah. Man, but whatever topic, know. because just, Rob. Just let me know. You know, it continues on, but I mean, Sheldon has his problems, so we try. We try. But Mount's going to be in. We got to let him hit rock bottom, though, man. Yeah. And those drum sessions are actually fun, they have too. But Rob Rob couldn't be with us today because he's off in the Adirondacks or something. Right, so. right. Things up in Thousand Islands. Yep. Yeah, Thousand Islands or whatever. But it's been cool. But we're going to have, because obviously, I don't even ask anymore if I can play a Gothic Toad song. Not but happening. 
Bug Jar, this ties in well. My good friend Kevin Wilcox has been the UV Rays. One Christmas, he lives in the in Vegas now. They came back. It was everything rock should be. We had mass. He was basically selling his CDs for shots. If you bought him a shot, you give him for CD. Okay. And he's just the cops showed up. It's like booze all over. It was just great rock and roll. And that's his stuff. So we're going to play Puzzle Panther with, I think Kevin said, there's one song he has on here about the time he pissed his pants. I think this is, that's what he said, how he was, this is a song about I peed my pants. That yeah, might I be think it. this is about a, a panther pissing its pants. So <laughs> ending on that masterpiece theater note, <laughs> Puzzle Panther by the You re Rays, when we miss you, Kev, and you come back here, be great. Party on, party on, Jeff. And All right, we'll man. See you uh, soon. Bye. Yeah, see ya. Bye. <laughs>